Victor Hugo arrived on the quay in St. Peter Port in 1855. He was seeking refuge, but he found a home. For the rest of his life, Victor Hugo and Guernsey enjoyed a special bond. He purchased his first home, the first home he ever owned. Hauteville House is a triumph of unique personal inspiration. It is a total work of art where Hugo conceived every detail. But there's much more to tell about Victor Hugo than can be conveyed by Hauteville House. It's the story of a poet, author, dramatist, artist, social reformer, and philanthropist, a visionary who espoused the principles of human dignity, freedom of the individual, the rights of women and children, and universal education. The Victor Hugo in Guernsey Society wants to share more about the life and legacy of this unique individual, especially the influence of his 15-year sojourn here in Guernsey, a place that he described as a rock of hospitality and freedom. The Society plans to create a Victor Hugo Center here in Guernsey. The time is right to celebrate Hugo's uh, life and Guernsey's most famous resident because Hauteville House has undergone a multi-million euro restoration. The musical Les Miserables is, has attracted audiences in 42 countries. Victor Hugo exhibitions are popular in Europe, America, and Australasia. But Guernsey has a special relationship with this citizen of the world. The Victor Hugo Center is going to be designed to serve six key objectives. Celebrate the life and work of Victor Hugo, especially in Guernsey. Stimulate awareness in schools of his novels, poetry, art, and ideas. Enhance Guernsey's tourism, hospitality, and cultural offering. Provide a center for the study of Victor Hugo's life and work. Explore Guernsey's historic links and, his, and linguistic links to France and complement Hauteville House and create links to other similar institutions. This is an ambitious, an ambitious agenda like the man himself. To achieve these objectives and to ensure success, we've appointed award-winning exhibition designers, Cass and Mann, to collaborate with us as we define and shape the center. Cass and Mann, based in London and Paris, have experience and imagination necessary to create this self-sustaining interpretation center that will be appropriate to our needs. The Ben Franklin Museum in Philadelphia, that you see at the top there, the Winston Churchill Museum in London, and the Cité du Vin are examples of their work. We expect the center to have three components. First, it will be an interpretation center and museum to illustrate the life, work, and principles of Victor Hugo. It will highlight ways in which the island invigorated him and how Guernsey's people, landscape, and especially the surrounding sea contributed to his writing. Second, it will provide a flexible exhibition space and a hub for art, poetry readings, dance, music, lectures, traveling exhibitions, and community uses. In short, it will be a lively place in St. Peterport where people can enjoy the activities that Hugo himself once enjoyed. Third, an education center, a place for the study of Victor Hugo's life and work, a place for schools to come and explore Hugo's legacy in literature, art, human rights, and social justice. There'll be a library of his works in translation, as well as books about the man and his ideas. We want to place the Victor Hugo Center in a global context, creating links with international partners. Of course, we have an immediate relationship with Hauteville House. We want to create a complementary offering to provide modern exhibition and gallery space that's not possible in the existing house. We want to also reach out to the Victor Hugo Museums in Paris, in Besançon, Luxembourg, and other places. There's even the Victor Hugo House our Casa Victor Hugo in Cuba. We plan to join in this constellation of, of locations. At the same time, Cambridge and Oxford have centers for the study of human rights. Similar centers exist in Norway, Ireland, South Africa, Denmark, and Australia. Our focus is going to be outward, 
because we want to make connections with these places based on our shared values. Within Guernsey itself, we envisage the center to be a gateway attraction to encourage the exploration of the whole island, reminding visitors that they can follow in Victor Hugo's footsteps all over Guernsey. They can visit his house, of course, but also his walks, carriage rides, and picnics. They can visit his statue and garden in Candy Gardens, his bench in the town church, by the town church, or the archives that uh, tell about his life at the Prio Library. Fourth, four key themes will guide our storytelling. Victor Hugo himself, an introduction to the man, his wife, his family, and his muse and mistress, Juliette de Rouvet. Victor Hugo in Guernsey, his dramatic flight from France, his everyday life in 19th century Guernsey, the people he met, the activities and interests, his philanthropy, such as feeding the, feeding the poor children of St. Peter Fort, his social campaigns in favor of lifeboats and against capital punishment. The inspiration he found in Guernsey itself his exploration of the town and countryside, his conversations with working men, shipbuilders and laborers, doctors, clergymen and merchants, learning Guernsey French words, which some of which he actually then introduced in his novels, his love of the landscape, and most especially his passion for the sea. Finally, we'll address the legacy of Victor Hugo, the lasting global impact of his creative output in poetry, novels, plays, and manifestos, his artwork, and especially his lifelong commitment to human rights, freedom, and humanitarian principles, reminding all of our visitors of the relevance of these ideas today. With Cass and Mann, we're developing a spectacular and immersive experience for visitors. Innovative and interactive storytelling and dynamic exhibits will reflect the enthusiasm and vigor of Hugo himself. The center will exemplify Lord Reith's command to the BBC many years ago, inform, educate, and entertain. The heart of the museum will be the story of Guernsey and Victor Hugo, his gradual discovery of the island's mystery and beauty and ways in which it inspired and revitalized him. Surround, uh, surrounding this central story will be a series of galleries that focus on key aspects of his life and work, allowing visitors the freedom to choose their own pathways through the exhibition. At the heart of the Interpretation Center will be the island of Guernsey itself. We envisage a large-scale physical model of the island equipped with interactive screens so that visitors can choose to see Victor Hugo's house, his walks, where he bathed, where he went for his picnics. Iconic locations from Toilers of the Sea will light up, giving visitors, in a sense, a virtual tour of the island. Surrounding the model will be large screens projecting images of the sea. The visitor will be immersed in the island experience, standing metaphorically between the land and the sea. As, explore, as visitors explore the island virtually, they'll see the horizon beyond them, and they can appreciate Hugo's love of the sea and the inspiration it provided. At regular intervals, the mood will change as storms approach and engulf the visitor. Blue skies and serene seas transform into churning clouds and angry foaming waves, and visitors will share the experience that Hugo enjoyed as he stood writing in his lookout high above Havlet Bay. At other times, external forces of nature will give way to inner thoughts and dreams of the creative artist. The island becomes a prison rock of exile, but also a seat of psychological escape and creative genius. The screens will fill with his art, paintings, writing, and quotations. Surrounding this dramatic central story, other rooms will reveal in greater detail aspects of the great man in his work. Family life in Hauteville House, his devoted mistress, as I said, Juliette Drouet, the poet and writer, Les Miserables, Toilers of the Sea, the visionary artist, 
and a political thinker and social reformer. The final gallery space will be devoted to his legacy in literature, poetry, and art, and the ongoing struggle worldwide to achieve his principles of human rights and individual freedoms. In addition to the interpretation center that I've described, we want to include an education study center. There'll be a twofold purpose for this. Schools will be invited to come and learn about Hugo and his legacy. School groups from Guernsey, the UK, and France will follow in Victor Hugo's footsteps and be encouraged to write their own poems and prose, to make art from his dramatic plots. After all, everyone likes to draw an octopus, you know. <laughs> the study center uh, can also be a place for visiting researchers and scholars to study the life of Victor Hugo, his literature, and his philosophy, a quiet place where they can find, as he did, uh, the ability to, uh, to, to write and, uh, and find inspiration similar to the inspiration that he found many years ago on the island. The third part of the center is the flexible exhibition space that I've spoken of, a place where a variety of stimulating activities can happen. All the things that Victor Hugo supported, art, music, lectures, poetry readings, dance, special events like traveling exhibitions. This space will be curated and available to all islanders as a shared home for local talent. These are our exciting plans. As I said before, they are very ambitious. But Hugo challenges us to make a difference in the world, to set goals and to accomplish them. Our project will require significant support and funding as our plans progress. We have to find a home here in Guernsey, as Hugo did, and then make it our own, as he did. We hope that you share our enthusiasm and that you will make our campaign your campaign as well, so that together we can transform this dream into a reality. Thank you very much.